I've literally had like eight, nine months of nothing coming to, to me. And this is after success is like the age of Ani Hai Diwani. There was one article that came out and that article was like, yeah, they get all these Russian prostitutes to work here in Bollywood. And I was like, I'm not Russian. Many times I felt like I'm so ugly, nobody loves me. Actually, not so much here. When I went to Hollywood, um, I've had one woman who said, um, can you put your hair up? And I put my hair up and then she's like, oh, no, 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 put it back down. And the producer basically wanted to go on a date with me. And I was, already, I was seeing someone at the time and I was like, I'm really sorry, I'm not interested. And then there was no call back. Today with me, there is a woman who possibly has faced a lot in the industry after becoming an actress, or so she tells me. Uh, sharing her own untold story with us today is Kalki Kekla joining us in conversation with Pink Villa. Everybody has struggles in their life, and I'm sure you must have too. You were telling me that you've battled more after becoming an actress. <laughs> Do you remember your first audition? Was it traumatic? Oh yeah, I do. I had a terrible audition with actually Rehan Engineer, who I regularly work with now. But at that time, I went for an audition for a um, musical yeah. that he was doing called Into the Woods. And it was like a big operatic musical. Everybody was like very excited. And I'm not a singer, but they said actors who can sing and sing singers who can act. Yeah. That was the thing in the audition. So, so I went to the audition full confidence. I like rehearsed the song for two days and everything. And I got there and I heard like the other people auditioning and there was some like proper opera singers like oh type, you know, all that vibratum kind of stuff happening. I went inside, there was a guy on a piano who was playing and he was like, what key would you like to sing in? I was like, key, my son, I don't know what key, key, key. You know, I had no clue what he was talking about, and it was so professional. And Rehan is also like a really intelligent, like yeah. smart guy, and I was just very intimidated. So I froze. I, like they started, uh, they said, "What song are you gonna sing?" So I said, "This song tomorrow from Annie." They started playing, and I nothing came out. I was like you with your voice, nothing was coming out. I just got stuck and I, I got like teary eyed and I was like, I'm really sorry, I'm, I wasted your time and I ran out of there. But uh, has there ever been like a really mean comment directed at you at audition or at, by anybody you know, in the industry? Um, I have had people, I've had auditions that have happened. Um, actually not so much here, when I went to Hollywood yeah. and in LA and um, Someone, one lady came uh, said to me, can you come closer uh, so I can see the wrinkles around your eyes? Uh, I was like, okay, <laughs> you know? And then another guy, um, I, I, he said, how old are you? I said, uh, 30 at the time, I was 30. And he said, oh, don't worry, you still have five years left to your career. So you, <laughs> I remember being like, whoa, it's the same all over the world, I guess, yeah. you know? But I ha here, not so much. Um, um, yeah, I've had a little bit like, uh, don't show too much of your teeth, your teeth are too big. Uh, I've had friends who've told me stories also, like, mm. lose the thighs. You know, just like, casual comments on their body or the way they look. Um, I've had one woman who said, um, can you put your hair up? And I put my hair up and then she's like, oh, no, 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 put it back down. You know, like, so it's just like, you start your audition with the feeling that you look like shit. Yeah, so I think you feel like And that. I think that they spend their whole day, one, like, taking one audition after another, and they just become really numb. Bitter. They become numb, like, they're just like, okay, next, 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 you know, and they don't pay attention to yeah. what they're saying, but it can really affect yeah. somebody who's, who's new. Yeah. Has it ever affected your self-esteem in any For way? For sure, for sure, many times. Many times I felt like I'm so ugly, nobody loves me. But I, I wake up feeling like that today also sometimes. Mm -hmm. Who knows, you know, like it can be hormonal, it can be um, just someone just looking at you funny. There's so many different mm -hmm. reasons for us to like um, doubt ourselves. I think it's human, but at the same time, I've never allowed that 
to be the center of my focus. Yeah. How many times have uh, people really treated you like you are a foreigner? That you're not oh a yeah, I remember being really upset after Devdi because I, the, there was one article that came out and at that time I was reading all yeah. everything because it was first, first film, film yeah. um, and that article was like yeah, they get all these Russian prostitutes to work here in Bollywood and I was like, I'm not Russian. <laughs> get your research right. <laughs> you know, um, so I found, yeah, I found that judgmentalness yeah. coming from our own media. Like, yeah. it's not even just people on the, you know, like random people. It's actually part of the industry. So I found that really tough um, in the beginning. But yeah, you grow a thick, thicker skin and also I just, I think my superpower today is just to not read that stuff. Yeah. A lot of women also and actually a lot of men too because we are speaking about it, um, face a lot of um, sexual proposition at the hands of you know the predators that we have in the industry and it's, it's, not, it's not a mystery. Hmm. Casting couch is a reality and there are a lot of people who take advantage of uh, actors who are trying to make it big and mm -hmm, who have bigger mm -hmm. dreams. Have you ever had such an incident? I've had an incident where it wasn't so direct like yeah. a sexual proposition but the producer of a certain film that I was um, like I'd been called for like I did an audition yeah. and they called me back and the producer basically wanted to go on a date with me. And I was already, I was seeing someone at the yeah. time and I was like, I'm really sorry, I'm not interested. Yeah. And then there was no call back. And the film also didn't happen. The film didn't happen. Yeah. And Kalki, when, when these things happened to you, how do you deal with it? Did it break you in the beginning? Like after becoming an actress mm. and uh, people loved you in Dave D. It's, mm. it's not funny, people loved you in Dave D. For a lot of time you didn't have work after Dave D, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah. Did, I, how, I did the theatre afterwards yeah. for a long time. Yeah, I'm not talking about films. Yeah. But Films didn't come your way for quite some yeah. time. How, how did you deal with that? Um, again, I busied myself with the creative work. You know, I wrote a play but called Skeleton Woman. No, Sorry. I don't think it broke me because I'm still here. I'm still yeah. working. Um, there are days where you feel broken and those days are still there today. But I think I've gotten used to the fact that things are so up and down yeah. and I, I've made peace with the fact that sometimes you will wake up thinking you'll never get work again and other times you'll wake up feeling like there's too much work yeah. you know and I've literally had like eight nine months of nothing coming to, to me yeah. and this is after successes like yeah. Ye Jawani Hai Diwani yeah. where like you feel like oh my god nobody's giving me work yeah. and then suddenly all of a sudden three four things are coming at the same time and you have to suddenly make a choice because there's too yeah. many things so uh, that's the nature of our job we have to get used to rejection nepotism has become a huge discussion and debate today and um, that is also existing a lot of star kids are talented but there is always this debate that you know they are privileged and they don't sometimes talented actors don't get their piece of cake because of them so has that ever happened to you where you I've never been, I just, I've never been so clued in, you know, I'm a little bit of a unicorn, like I really <laughs> don't know what's going on, what people are saying in the industry about me and all of that. And I definitely don't know who's doing the next big film or no clue, I'm really clueless. But you, in the beginning of this interview, you, uh, we had this discussion and you said that your struggle was more after being an actress. Yeah, I think struggle with celebrityness, celebrityhood, whatever it's called, you know, just struggle with like, um, I, as I said, I like to be candid and I like not to hide, yeah. but I found that I had to start keeping things to myself because people will just like take you out of context and make it into a very yeah. shocking headline or something. Uh, also, you don't know how much what you say is going to affect other people, like yeah. I remember you know, when I talked about what happened to me as a child, uh, abuse, or when I talk, oh, talked about my divorce, then suddenly like people were asking my parents and my brother and people in my family. Yeah. And I felt like, oh, now they're also affected. Yeah. And it's also their lives, right? They want their privacy. So I've had to learn that the hard way yeah. to be a little more private. Um, so yeah. But you know, when you talk about child abuse, it is a situation where a lot of majority of the population, not just in India, across the world, bear with it mm, and they keep, and keep quiet. silent. Yeah. yeah. So at least there's somebody who's speaking up. What went through your mind and what during when it happened, and how long did you take to open up, and what actually pushed you to open up? 
Oh, I've, I opened up long back to like a therapist and, you know, to actually a partner that I was with for a long time. So I opened up privately mm. and dealt with it through therapy. And mm. I think that's very important before you deal with it publicly. Yeah. Because the public is harsh and can judge you. And, mm. you know, I got like statements like, oh, she just wants publicity. Mm. She's just putting this out there because she has no yeah. work. So, you know, you got to be ready for that and you can only be ready for that when you've already done the work yeah. inside yourself. So that work was, was, you know, I was already on that journey. But this was just, I, uh, you know, I was, I'm, I was part of um, a conference for child sexual abuse yeah. with Rahul Bose. Yeah. He's very involved with that. So, you know, as soon as he told me that this, this is what he does every year, he gets all the people, all the NGOs who work with child sexual abuse yeah. in India together, together yeah. and have a conference. I was super excited to be yeah. part of it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I want to know what kind of work they're doing and how I can get involved, yeah. you know. So it came from that and there was press there. So, you know, I said, you know, I feel like every single woman around me that I know, has gone through some experience, some, even if it's yeah. just like, you know, some uncle touching them or yeah. whatever. There's, there's been so many and yet we don't talk about it, you know, and I, apparently it's, it's as much with boys. Yeah. There's a Actually, huge yeah. number of boys who are also going through that and boys will talk about it even less. Yeah because of the taboo of being masculine Manly. and yeah. things. So it's just, yeah, the sh statistics shocked me and I spoke about that and the fact that, you know, something had happened to me. So, yeah, I don't want the headline to be just about me. I want it to be about the fact that this yeah. happens. Also, you know, a lot of actors and actresses on this show have said that, you know, when they did a film and the outcome that they saw did not match you know, somewhere their role was edited or uh, has that ever happened to you? Uh, I, w I mean, I, yeah, yeah, there have been roles where I felt like it's become like skim milk, <laughs> you know, just barely enough to like get some taste in there, but it'll do. Um, uh, but generally speaking, I have to say I've been pretty lucky. But apart from when, when, when that happened to you, whichever instance, would you work with those same producers or team again? knowing that this has happened to you once. Yeah, actually I would. Because sometimes it's a creative call. I think I know which way. Yeah. I would because it's a creative call, yeah. It's not, the film is bigger than each individual actor. Um, and it's okay, sometimes it happens. Thank you for sharing this story because you know, a lot of these stories, like I say, every after every episode is that it goes untold. It's just not shared. Hmm. And um, today people are actually willing to know the struggle behind the entire journey that you've had. And I'm glad that you took this platform to share it. I'm very, very happy about Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks. Hi guys, I'm Kalki Kekla and you're watching me on Pink Villa. And if you like this video, then please like, share, subscribe to Pink Villa.